Hi. Hello. Hi, Sophia. Hi, Jessica. Hi, darling. So I'm looking at the young and the old. It's kind of oh, weird. Oh, thanks a lot. The young and the old. Did I say you were the... The adult <laughs> losers and the young losers. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you first meet? Day one? <laughs> uh, day one was uh, the uh, read-through, the uh, yep. script reading. I was <laughs> so nervous. There Why? were a lot more people than I expected it to be. Oh, really? You didn't know we were all going to be there? I, I, I did. I just didn't really kind of visualize everyone being there until I walked in and there was a lot of people. <laughs> what did you think when you heard that Jessica Chastain was going to play the adult version of you? Oh. I was happy. Uh, <laughs> I was, uh, I always wanted her to play me. So <laughs> it's like you're saying this, now you're That's next so to me. Sweet. What do you mean? Tell um, me. I always, I always say, you know, I, I never said this with her right next to me. So it's weird. I can't it. wait to hear what you're about to say. Uh, I'll, uh, since day one, uh, uh, I was talking to Andy Muschietti, who's the director, and he, uh, um, we were talking about who would probably play. It was weird to, to say that <laughs> on the first day of shooting it one, but uh, we mentioned you, and you've worked with him. You pretty much look like me, and also you're, you're an amazing actress. So I just thought you'd be great for this role, and, and oh, you are. Thanks. So. Well, you you created her. <laughs> thanks. So yeah. how how does it feel to take a role that someone did create, and now you're the adult version, so you have to take part. I love that you're using adult, not adult. old. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> um, old is relative. Um. <laughs> um, no, it's uh, it's great. I mean, as an actor, what you normally do is you have to create all of that stuff in your imagination. You know, where what was my character's childhood like? You know, all of those things that you have to make up and. I got the first movie, so I got to watch Soap's beautiful performance and um, how spunky and fiery and intelligent and brave that um, her Beverly was, and and so she did a lot of my homework for me. <laughs> so what is it? What does it represent? <sighs> That's a deep question. I think it's different for each person. Um, our film deals a lot with the childhood trauma and adults coming to terms with it with it. So I guess it could mean child, the trauma of your childhood. Uh, Beverly comes to terms with uh, what she has always thought love was, um, which was something that was painful and tormented and confusing because the person that she loved the most in the world hurt her. Uh, and it's a pattern that she repeats throughout her life. Um, and so for me, her coming to terms with it is her coming to terms with breaking that pattern. Great. Uh, <laughs> I guess because it was a childhood trauma, uh, mm -hmm. it basically represented present trauma, trauma, <laughs> trauma yeah. of growing up, um, fears that you have as a kid. And um, uh, my dad being one of them. Um, and uh, it was more of it kind of helped the losers realize that um, they can they are, even though they're kids, um, being kids doesn't mean being weak. Being kids means there's a chance, uh, have, they have a life ahead of them, and it is just one of the obstacles they have to face. Um, so I guess that's what it represents. And then this is obviously a fun horror movie, it's a popcorn movie, but it deals with some Hmm. Serious domestic violence, homophobia, body yeah. body issues. Do you expect a horror movie to deal with that? The reason why I think Stephen King is the king of this genre <laughs> is because uh, he writes psychological horror. So mm. the monster usually is spawned from human. You know, it's mm. inside of us. You look at Pet Cemetery. You look at Misery. It's like we can become our worst enemies sometimes. And he wrote uh, the novel of It because a hate crime was committed in his childhood town. And that darkness uh, he wanted to explore. Um, and that's the first scene in our film, actually. That's why it was so important that that scene is in the film. When I saw that first scene, it was really hard to watch. I mean, yeah. that is brutal, and I think it's going to be hard to watch for anyone. Mm -hmm. But as a gay man sitting there with his husband, it was hard. Yep. Why did we need that scene? 
I don't want, it's gonna be hard to talk about this without crying. Um, I think you need that scene because, I mean, he writes about the darkness that is under the surface. So the dirt under the fingernails, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. Of these small towns or of mankind. And, and that's what it represents, right? Mm -hmm. is, the, is in hiding that um, darkness of human behavior. I think it was important to see Adrian's scene and not to change it, you know, change from what it is from the novel because I think we're living in a time right now where it is very much part of our culture and part of our conversation and we haven't moved past it. Mm. Um, and so we can't pretend that it doesn't still exist because it's part of our everyday. Is it hard for you to watch? I haven't watched it yet. I've only <laughs> heard about it. So uh, I feel like, yeah, it's going to be really hard to watch. Mm. But um, Was it hard for you like in the scene with Ben? when you're saying, I would never be with a fat yeah. Is that I hard know. to do? It, oh, it, was, it was terrible because it was <laughs> of like, I, it's like the complete opposite, you know? Right. Um, and it's not Beverly. It's not Beverly though. No. That's the thing. Beverly would never ever say that. Um, so yeah, it was a little, little hard, but uh, you know, we all know it's, it's part of the acting business and um, in real life, she would never and I would never say that. So what kind of pressure is there to live up to the first it? I mean, it did well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love being part of an ensemble film because there's no pressure. I mean, I, I'm sure the studio has pressure, maybe. <laughs> They're like, they want to make us, they want to make money like they made for the first film, but I'm really happy to be part of this story, to be working with Andy again, to be um, continuing this beautiful performance that Soph gave, and um, I kind of feel like, <gasps> All right. <laughs> Hope you guys like it. <laughs> and covered in fake oh, blood. Oh, jeez, I know. Swimming in it. Mm. So much of this film is about <laughs> the childhood traumas, right? right? And what it represents your greatest fear. And what we saw so great in the first film, Beverly is like on the cusp of becoming a woman. You know, you see mm. like her in the pharmacy um, and you see her father saying, are you still my little girl? And this idea of like sexuality, what does it mean to become a woman? Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, yes, it's a, it, visually it's incredible. It's such a, like for a horror, the horror genre, all of this, but it, it just represents so much about what it is to be a woman. What was in that stuff though? What did they it, do? I don't know, it was really gross. It was like that slimy. Was sweet. Was that the one? They used different types of blood. This so. was not the one that you put, this is not uh -oh. the one that you want to taste. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it, it felt mm. like, um, I'm trying to figure out, a, a, how old are you? I can't really, you know what I mean? It was like um, that. Got it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep. So, um, but wait, wait, with wait. red dye, I'll tell you later. Um, and. Uh, That's another question about. Yeah, another super slimy. Thing. Yep, slimy. Yeah, slimy. Petroleum jelly. Okay, got it. But thinner. Got it. Um, That's what they use for uh, the hair scene when it gets on my hand. They really? Used hand, like, they used homemade lube for. Oh, well, hair. hey. <laughs> hand. Um, so I, I, I could have said it. Slip off. I don't know. <laughs> That's exactly, it was like swimming in a vat of lube. Yeah. <laughs> Dyed red. Dyed, Dyed red, red, yeah. Mm. Mm. So is it dead? Yes. Well, do we want to give spoilers? No, that's what I'm asking. Do you think it is that? At the beginning of the film or the end of the film? End of the film. I'm not giving away spoiler, Mark. It's not spoiler. It is a spoiler. <laughs> is it? Yes. Is it? Is it's a, it? Based, are you asking if there's going to be an It 3? Yes. No, there's not. I don't think there is. Or if there is, it won't be with me. Why and not? it won't be with Andy. Why because you... Stephen King didn't write an It 3. <laughs> the, the, the book's done. But Stephen King could be. If writing. he decides to write another chapter, I mean, great. But most likely, it'll be another. It'll be twenty-seven years later, so there'll be another actress. Yeah, it's true. So who do you want to play you in twenty-seven years from now? Since you already picked Jessica. Oh, mm. no, I do. <laughs> do I still have to pick? <laughs> and you were good at it. Late sixties. <laughs> Late sixties. Is that Susan Sarandon? Could be Susan. Sissy Spacek. 
That'd be two on the nose. Would it? She's kind of amazing. I mean, she's. Carrie. I know, she's but we don't have she's to have another She's already been covered in that blood. <laughs> How much fun is it, though, running around in a movie like this? Just screaming, and I know a lot of it is green screen and you're not seeing it, but is it fun? Most of this movie wasn't green screen. Really? Yeah, there was a lot of practical sets, more than I imagined that there would be. I was exhausted. I mean, honestly, I was exhausted. <laughs> I was sick so much. I, you know, at one point I, I kind of cut open the front of my shin. I was super sick the day that we filmed the quarry scene. And Barbara, who's the producer, took me to the hospital to try to get me like a B12 shot and all this stuff. And um, and then I just jumped in that cold water. I mean, it really How was. How do you get through it when you are sick? Because I was sick earlier this mm. week. I can't get out of bed. How do you people do it? You could get like out of bed. Human. You could, you could. It's... Those B12 shots, my doctor says, no, are not real. I know it's not. And actually, <laughs> I didn't have one that day. Um, but it's just, I don't know. I guess I'm just used to, I've never taken a day off work. Never kinda, once. Kinda, uh, you can't, you can't. Yeah. Not really, with, with, I was actually thinking about this. Usually you can at least somehow get your way off work. But with acting, you can't just say, I'm taking, you know, I'm taking a day off. You, Really can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's so many people that are there to make sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, of course, if there's a emergency, but we kind of learn how to like we learn like it, even if we're not feeling well, to just the show must go on. So now I have to ask you about another show, Tammy Faye. <gasps> have to show you, you have no show. idea. No, you have no idea the photo I'm going to show you right now. Is it you and her? Maybe. So do you know who Tammy Faye Baker is? She was a televangelist who created PTL with her husband, Jim Baker. <gasps> Look at that. So that's her, and I'm going to play her next. Oh, no way. And do you know who's playing Jim Baker? Yeah, I know. Andrew Garfield. Yeah, I know. Oh, my God. Look at you. Your hair I is... I know my hair is... Oh, wow. You are working it. <laughs> that was oh probably... God, that's amazing. I spent a day with her when the documentary came out. Really? Yeah. So yeah. you're going to do your own singing? I did it already. You did oh, it already? I did already? my pre-records. I did um, seven songs, and I worked with Dave Cobb, who's the producer who did um, A Star Is Born. That was super scary. Yeah, so I've done, I've done seven of her songs, and then we start filming October 31st. So now you did make your singing debut by singing Me Happy Birthday as a critic's <laughs> choice. So I will take credit for you getting the role. There you go. Um, Praise be. So singing gospels, huh? I know, Tammy Faye Gospels, so you know. <laughs> come on, <laughs> you just give me you something. You really want me to sing, come on. You're gonna have yes. to wait, wait and see the movie. I wanna uh, see the makeup tests. Yeah, that's gonna be exciting. Cause I'm she had an all tattooed oh on. Yeah, cause she had her makeup tattooed on her face later in life. Wow. I mean, she really was a character. Um, you should watch the documentary. RuPaul narrated her doc documentary and I got the rights to play her in 2012 um, when I, after Zero Dark Thirty came out, I, I re-watched the documentary, it was on TV, and I was like, why has no one ever done a movie about her? So I bought the rights for five, I think it was like $5,000, and um, didn't have a production company or anything, and then like worked forever to try to get it to happen, and now it's happening. It's amazing. Wow. Well, I can't wait. I love her. Because I've been waiting to show you that photo. <laughs> oh, honey. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thanks. for not scaring me. <laughs> I know we're going now. That's, there's no one under the table. I teased you. We told him that someone was going to jump out and scare him. But no one did.